Welcome to our lesson about mesh errors. In some situations, a mesh will fail, and in this lesson, we're going to review some solutions for such problems. Let's begin with a new study. OK. Now let's right-click on Mesh and select Create Mesh. Expand Mesh Parameters. I'm going to make the global size, let's say, 40. This is obviously way too big. Let's try it out. We'll click OK. And here's my build error message. Meshing failed. Let's click OK. Let's create a new mesh. And let's expand the Advanced section. Here's a checkbox for Automatic Trials for Solid. Let's check it. This option is available for solid meshes, but not for beam or shell meshes. Here we specify the number of trials. Let's say 5. Basically, what this option does, when the program encounters an error, it tries to recreate the mesh a second time using a smaller mesh size and tolerance value. The tolerance value specifies the distance at which nodes merge. If the distance is less than specified here, the nodes will merge. In just a second, I'm going to show you where we can set up the size and tolerance factors for these options. For now, let's go ahead and click OK to build our mesh. And as you see, we've now created a successful mesh. The mesh in this area is clearly smaller than the rest of the solid bodies. Let's go to Options, Default Options tab, Mesh Branch, and here we can set the global element size factor and tolerance factor for each trial. What this means is how much smaller the element size and the tolerance value will become with each successive trial. Let's cancel out of this window. And let's try a different scenario. Let's apply Mesh Control. Select this face. Element Size, 0.2. And let's click OK. Now right-click Create Mesh. Reset. Advanced. Uncheck Automatic Trials for Solid and click OK. Mesh in progress. Oh, mesh failed. Let's click OK. Let's right click on our mesh. Create Mesh. Under Mesh Parameters, we've got two options Standard Mesh and Curvature Based Mesh. The Standard Mesh basically creates an even mesh along an entire body. The curvature-based mesh, on the other hand, this creates smaller elements in an area with higher curvature values. Here we can set the maximum element size and the minimum element size for the area with the high and low curvature, as well as the minimum number of elements in a circle. This value can be anywhere from 4 to 36. The higher the curvature value, the more elements there's going to be in the circle. Let's take a look at the last option under Mesh Parameters. It's Element Size Growth Ratio. This number specifies how much bigger the next layer of the element is compared to the previous layer. At this point, I'm going to leave the default values in place and click OK. And here's our mesh. This concludes our lesson about resolving mesh errors.